You may need to look back at the JSP code presented in the previous lesson. In this lesson, I want to show you the code of the Java class that was generated from it. If you know the kind of code that gets generated, it should make it easier for you to decide where and how to put things in the JSP code. First, the name of the generated source code is the same as that of the JSP file, with a period replaced by an underscore and the standard Java suffix added to it on the end. Now, the code is generated into a basic template format with your code inserted in the appropriate places. The generated class is a member of the package org Apache JSP. The name of the package is determined by the code generator, and it's generating the code for its own use, so it can name it whatever it likes. Now, these first three import statements are always the same. These three packages, along with the standard Java Lang package, are always imported. In the code of main page, the import attribute specified the importation of the vector class, so the fourth line was added here. This class extends the HTTP JSP base class. Now, you won't see them in this example, but there are a couple of methods inherited from this class that can be overridden. It's rare that you will need to do this, but if you have some initialization that needs to occur only at the very beginning, you might want to do it in the method named JSP init. You could need to establish a link with a database, for example. The JSP init method is called only once when the object is instantiated, but before any connection has been made to the page. Also, you may want to override the JSP destroy method to release any resources that you're holding, such as an open database. The JSP destroy method is called only once at the very end of the life of the object. Now, these methods are not used very often, but they are there if you need them. The first thing in the class are your declaratives. In the main page JSP file, there were three two methods and a reference to a vector object. Nothing is done to this code, it's just inserted just as it was written. Now this vector object is part of the standard template. It holds a list of dependencies of this class and is returned from a call to get dependence. Here is the main generation method. This is the method that's called whenever a page needs to be output. The two arguments passed to this method are the request and response objects. The request object holds the information that came from the web browser, and the response object is there for you to send information back to the web browser. This method is capable of throwing an exception, so there are exceptions defined as being thrown from this method. Here is where the other reference to implicit objects are defined. Notice they are all local to this method, which means you can't use them in methods of your own in the declaratives unless you pass them to those methods. Also notice that they are all set to null, so none of these objects exist yet. This is where the implicit objects are created inside the try block. All of the code in this method is inside a try block because so much of it can throw exceptions. Anyway, after this first block of code has finished executing, either the implicit objects exist or an exception has been thrown. Next come the output statements. Any HTML code that you included in your JSP page is written to the output. Your scriptlet Java code is also included here. The calls to the write method output the HTML code from the original page, and the Java code is inserted here to output code in the same stream. The fundamental difference between print line and write is the appending of the carriage return and new line characters at the end. You can call print or write in your code if you prefer. Here, a call is made from the Java code to the method make dividing line to output the line of asterisks. This is another call to the same method, but this one was done in the JSP page inside the expression tags, causing it to become part of the generated code. Here is some more Java code inserted into the middle of the 
right statements. This one adds a few things to the global vector object, then calls show vec elements, passing it the out object so it can output the contents of the vector object. And that's about all. If the calls to print line or write throw an exception, it'll be caught and handled at the bottom of the catch block here. This is the default code for handling it by displaying the default error page.